So let's solve the simpler one first, which is the second differential equation. This is a differential equation we've solved many times before. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative uh, capital phi. So I'm going to get d squared phi by d phi squared. And that's equal to negative phi times m. I'm going to move this over to the left-hand side. d squared phi by d phi squared plus m times phi. And sorry, these should have been m squareds. And that's equal to 0. And so what I'll do is I'll use the same trial function that we've used many times for the same solution function, where we'll say capital phi is equal to se to the r phi. I substitute that in. Well, the double derivative of that um, solution function it means that I'm just having r squared se to the r phi, r squared se to the r phi, plus m squared se to the r phi, and that's equal to zero. I can distribute out the se to the r phi, so I have r squared plus m squared, and that's still equal to zero, which means that r squared plus m squared must be equal to zero since the se to the r phi can't be equal to zero. And in the end what I get is r is equal to plus or minus i times m, which means that my solution phi as a function of phi is equal to a e to the i m phi plus b e to the negative i m phi. Let's now look at the boundary conditions for this so since we know that this thing is spinning around in a circle, then that means that wherever it is or wherever the starting point that we define um, the snapshot with which this thing is going to be rotating around, we know that if it moves around a complete circle, meaning we add 2 pi to that starting point, the two waves that represent this particle should match up. Otherwise, we would have destructive interference and the wave would collapse. And so because of this, then we can use this as a boundary condition for our solution. And since we know that each of these solutions represent the particle moving in one direction and the other direction, then we'll look at it individually. We'll look at them individually. So if I look at the one that's moving the positive exponential term, then substituting in for this boundary condition relationship, I would say a e to the i m phi is equal to a e to the i m phi plus 2 pi. What I can do is I can divide both sides by a e to the i m phi. So on this left hand side I would get 1. And down here on the bottom I would get a e to the i m phi. This top term, since I have a sum of in the exponential, I can break that up into a product of exponentials. So a e to the i m phi times e to the i m 2 pi. What that means is that I can cross off the a e to the i m phi in both cases. And what I'm left with is 1 is equal to e to the i m times 2 pi. And so the only time that this is going to be equal to 1, this exponential term on the right-hand side, is when m is, a, is an integer multiple. So meaning it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or even 0. That's also a possible solution. If we look at the b term, I'd have b is equal to negative e to the i m phi, and that's equal to b e to the negative i m phi plus 2 pi. And I do the exact same procedure. I divide both sides by b e to the negative i m phi. So I get 1 on the left-hand side, b e to the negative i m phi. In this case, then, I'd also get uh, b e to the negative i m phi e to the negative i m 2 pi. Again, I can cross off b e to the negative i m phi, and what I'm left with again is 1 is equal to e to the negative i m times 2 pi. And again, we can see that our number e or m, that can be equal to negative integers as well. It doesn't really matter, like both of these solutions lead to the exact same result, where in this case my m can be equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2, and on and on and on, simply because it doesn't really matter if I choose the positive or negative value of m, I'm still going to get 1, and e to the 0, if I said m is equal to 0, is still equal to 1. So in all these cases, then I get a solution where my m is equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2. 
What it also means is that I can simplify my solution, or my what I would write as my solution to phi as a function of phi, because I can write it simply as a e to the i m phi. Since the m, since it can be plus or minus um, any integer value, it encompasses both the positive and negative solution that we calculated before. So this is going to be the solution that we're going to be moving forward with for our phi term. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to normalize so that we can find out what a is. So leaving that up in the corner just so we can refer to it. But when we normalize, we're going to say, well, it's the integral between 0 and 2 pi, psi star, or sorry, phi star times phi d phi, and we know that's equal to 1. And I know that the bounds of my integral are between 0 and 2 pi because those are the bounds with which we defined our coordinate space, that for all space for phi is between 0 and 2 pi, meaning that it rotates once around the circle. So in this case, if I substitute in directly for my phi, then I'm going to get my integral between 0 and 2 pi, a e to the negative i m phi, because that's the complex conjugate of the actual value of phi that we were, we've declared as our answer, e to the i m phi, d phi, and that's equal to 1. I move my a's out to the front, and I get an a squared, integral between 0 and 2 pi. Well, if I multiply e to the negative i m phi times e to the i m phi, well, that means I add the exponents. And since I have i m phi minus i m phi, then I get e to the 0. e to the 0, that's simply equal to 1. So I'm really just taking the integral of d phi. And so the integral of d phi is phi. And I'll evaluate that between 0 and 2 pi, which means that I get a squared times 2 pi minus 0, applying the fundamental theorem of calculus. So 2 pi minus 0 is 2 pi. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. And then finally, I'll take the square root of both sides. That means then that my final solution, and my normalized solution in this case, phi is a function of phi is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root e to the i m phi, where m is equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2, on and on and on and on.